Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, this is Ben. You're listening to the Otaku Generation podcast. Or you're very confused. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation. Next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. Please refrain from taking slow fees while listening to the show. We make enough dumb faces so you don't have to. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where only the mics hear your secret thoughts. Show number 745, (coughs) September 18th, 2019. With this week's topic, the Investor Z Motion Manga. And now, treats you'll never get at Halloween, but you want to. Number one, 20 gram gold ingots. Number two... Nothing but your favorite candy. Number three, puppy. Number four, kitten. And number five, boy slash girlfriend of your choice. And now, somebody who knows people who know people, but not Jefferson, Alan Chase. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing? Good. I guess Jefferson knows people because I know people because he knows me. I think how that I think that's how it typically but works. Does he know that you know that he knows people? Hi, hello everyone. I'm Alan. I'm Matt. I'm Bryce. And I am Paul. What's freesh? What's bang? What's squeak with the OG crew? Indeed. Uh so I didn't do that much this weekend, but I did a bunch of stuff this week. So continue to work on the film documentary stuff. Um I a friend was in town. And uh, I want to go see her in the band that she's in. It's not her band. It's her friend's band. And uh, they were at the TLA. Uh, Dodie Clark um, was at the TLA. And uh, it's always a good show. It was definitely a good show. I, you know, I saw it last year. I saw it this year. Uh, And uh, I was given a photo pass. So I brought my camera and I took a lot of pictures. (laughs) Like, oh, maybe a little over a thousand pictures. Uh, So I narrowed it down to about, I don't know, near 300 or so. So I sent them over to the group. I haven't really heard anything. They're they're on tour. They literally went from Philly to Toronto in a, uh, in a basically, when I left at like 10 near 11 o'clock when the gig was over, you could see basically the venue, the people outside were taking the uh, letters down off the marquee. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. So, they, you know, they, it was a it was a good, good time. It was good to see my friend. And then um, I took uh, took some a lot of pictures. I'll probably put put a couple in discord. I'll probably put a select few probably in our, uh, you know, photos feed. Um, but for most of it, I'm, I'm giving, you know, the band sort of the the option, you know, what photos they want first. I put a couple of them out on Instagram. So, um, oh, out, nifty. outside of that, uh, on, on my Instagram, not the OG Networks one, but um, outside of that, not much. It was a busy, kind of crazy actual week for me. Um, weekend, I, I basically hung out with my stepbrother last night in Phoenixville. So, um, I saw all the stuff happening. They have like a little music festival or something going on on the main street in uh, Phoenixville. So, but that doesn't matter to anybody <laughs> who doesn't live uh, in Pennsylvania or anywhere near this area. So, um, Or indeed outside of Phoenixville. Yeah, or outside of Phoenixville. So anyhow, Matt, what about you? What, what's been going on? Uh, let's see. Well, I have been rereading uh, my copies of the Phil and Kaja folio books, um, Agatha H., which is the sort of novel versions of their award-winning webcomic Girl Genius. Um, The first volume is called Agatha H. and the Airship City. And then the second one, which I'm currently in the middle, is Agatha H. and the Clockwork Princess. And I believe they have volume three already published, which is Agatha H. and the Voice of the Castle. 
dun, dun, and dun. how did they hold up to the uh, the web comics? Um, well, the web comics are really cool and definitely uh, worth reading. But I would also say the books are good in a different way because books are really good at feeding you lots of background <laughs> and exposition and just sort of witty observations about the action that you you have conveyed to you in different ways in a graphical novel format. Um, because you're doing a graphic novel, actually this sort of ties in with our topic today, but um, the point is you can't have long, tedious blocks of expository text without it getting really boring for the audience. So the novel, so the graphic novel has to focus much more on visuals and action and witty dialogue than uh, an actual book can. So hmm. in, in a book, for example, long sections of back and forth uh, dialogue get very tedious very quickly. So it's often better to summarize dialogue in a book than to have it play out on screen like you do in a comic book or graphic novel. Hmm, okay. And and do the authors actually do that? I mean, is it an adaptation that works, or a uh, do, are they are they using the book medium to its full effect, or does it feel like a translated graphic novel? I guess. Um, no, I think that they're focusing more on the things that books do well as opposed to things that graphic novels do well. So I would because say it, it's a good complement to the uh, to the graphic. Uh, web comic. Uh, part of the charm is, of course, the uh, Phil Folio's excellent art. Yes, um, that adds so much to the character, and in fact, of course, the massive growth in popularity of Girl Genius. I would say read the Girl Genius comic first, um, and then if you're intrigued enough by the world, um, sit down, read the the book versions because they give you a little more depth, a little more background on the history of Europa, the folklore. Um, just cultural details, that sort of thing. Hmm, cool. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And aside from that, not too much uh, because it's getting to be autumn up here in this hemisphere, which means allergies are kicking my ass pretty bad. Oh, yeah. No, mm. they've been been hurting I've, me. That's why I've been coughing. That's why all kinds of noises come I've, out of me. I've just been having, like, I've been putting, like, Medical, medicated eye drops in my eyes and taking decongestants like they're candy. Yeah. Um, just so I can sleep at night. Yeah, the the cough drops are the favorite consumer mm -hmm. uh, good for me because I, I consume them like almost like candy. Um, and that's why I always have cough drops. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's well, why I'm always carrying cough drops. Let's see. So, um, so aside from that, only other thing I did was uh, a friend of mine has uh, an annual chili cook-off uh, just among friends. It's basically a picnic where everyone brings chili. Um, but it was time for that, and I went and got to hang out with people I don't get to see too often. So that was kind of a nice thing to spend my Saturday on. Um, but aside from that, I'm basically out of stuff to talk about. Um, how about uh, you, Bryce? Have you been doing anything interesting this week? Um, not a ton. I... <laughs> okay, thanks, Bryce. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I beat Fire Emblem, as I talked about last week. Um, so I've been playing Astral Chain, a game by Platinum Games, uh, the Bayonetta developers. Bayonetta developers. Uh, it's about a... Well, I started talking about it before. It's like humanity's last hope is in this arc where humanity's last civilization li lives... And you are a cop in this <laughs> in this world, and you fight off these uh, chimeras, which are the names of the enemies that have been like you know mm -hmm. pushed him into near extinction, uh, by capturing the chimera and using it as your own weapon, and that's the whole basis of your character. And I only touched it a little bit before well, when I talked about it last week, uh, but I think it's 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 really good. Uh, it has more detective work than I was expecting, like very um reminiscent of the Arkham uh, Batman games, where you sort of um. Especially Arkham Knight, where you sort of see like a hologram of like what happened, and you have this detective vision, and you just you sort of pick up clues and figure out, okay, how did this all go down? How did this person disappear? 
Mm. And then at the end of the case, or the second half of the case, usually you end up going into the uh, the Chimera dimension, and that's where the action kicks in. And you're like, okay, this is definitely by the Bayonetta developers, because <laughs> it's very character action based. I will say it's very fun though. Uh, so you sort of control your main character with her sort of baton, uh, gun, uh, combat weapon, mm-hmm. but you also are controlling the Chimera, which you have taken over your Legion, they call it. And once you have it on a chain, the astral chain, if you will. <laughs> and they use that to uh, to control it. And so you sort of are controlling two characters at once, although the Chimera sort of fights on its own, or the Legion fights on its own, uh, but you sort of position it in proper places. But the coolest part is actually you can, the chain you have between the Legion is actually a, kind of a weapon and a game mechanic. So if you move the, the Legion around an enemy, it will sort of chain them down to the ground, and you can sort of hit critical hits on their uh, backside because they're not able to move. Ooh, yeah. Also, a really fun thing where if an enemy's going to charge in at you, if you sort of separate from your legion and put the chain out there, or like close line the enemy <laughs> as they're coming through, and you sort of launch them back, and it's it's incredibly satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, yeah, it's fun. I think it's definitely uh, a good a good uh, I guess palette cleanser from Fire Emblem from a very turn based RPG way to a uh, you know more action based game. Uh, but yeah, it has a lot of depth. I mean, it's gonna have it has a full skill tree for all your leaders and skills, and you equip equipment and you upgrade them. So, it definitely has a lot of um, customization options. It also has a lot of like visual customization options. You can sort of change the armor of your uh, legion in your own character, uh, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, so you can sort of make you sort of have like a cool look to them that not everybody else has. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. I think it's a fun game. I would definitely check it out if you like uh, Platinum's other games like uh, Nier Automata or uh, Bayonetta. I think it will be a good. I think it's a good. It's a good play for the Switch, and I'm glad it's gotten such good reviews. That's why I sort of picked it up because it was pretty high, uh, highly recommended, and I wasn't really expecting that. I just didn't really know much about the game before I got it. Yeah, it's really interesting that it's a Switch exclusive too. Uh, that's not a play I would have expected from Platinum. Well, Bayonetta 2 is a Wii U exclusive, Switch exclusive now. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, okay. Apparently I Nintendo I bankrolled that. those games. It's a bankroll Bayonetta 2 for sure. Like Bayonetta 2 would not exist if Nintendo didn't say, hey, we'll help you make it, but only put it on the Wii U. And, of course, they put it on Switch because no one bought a Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think this is the same situation, um, which, you know, it's fine. I mean, I, at this point, you know, I guess I'm going to be able to make these games. I'm all for it, and I left my Switch. So mm-hmm. other than that... Uh, I played on Magic Arena, which I talked about a lot before, but haven't really had a chance to watch too much anime or manga, everyday manga, so I'll pass it on to Paul. Alrighty, so I also have not had much time to watch anime or read manga uh, in the past week, uh, or the past two weeks, actually, uh, mm-hmm. due to various things, but also because my parents were in town, mm. and uh, so... I, of course, there's the desperate uh, scramble to try to figure out what to do to entertain them, and even and now there's the added uh, um, challenge of figuring out how to feed them as they're on a vegan fad diet. Uh, so grapefruit juice, a... Paul, just gallons and gallons of grapefruit juice. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I if I'd gone for that route, it would have been much easier. But instead, um, I came up with some Asian stuff to feed them. Actually, so I did a, uh, a hot a mushroom and tofu hot pot the first night, mm-hmm. which okay. is Seriously? a nice. So yeah, it worked really well. It was a mm-hmm. nice social experience. Uh, something they hadn't done much. Mm-hmm. Uh, put some uh, cabbage, napa cabbage, and spinach in there. Like three kinds of mushrooms. Um, yeah, did a nice uh, uh, mushroom kombu dashi for it. Hmm. All right. That's good. And uh, then I did uh, the second night of that weekend a Korean vegetarian barbecue, uh-huh. uh, which was a little more uh, not uh, less traditional, let's say. But it's it's fun because you get to you know wrap all the barbecued bits. Um, I did uh, seitan with a nice Korean barbecue sauce. Uh, fried it up, and then there's the, the the bit where you wrap everything in lettuce leaves and stick in raw garlic and hot peppers and so on. Yeah, mm. for those who don't know what seitan is, not Satan, um, is like a wheat, um, like a weed meat supplement. It's kind of like the old school supplement for stuff like that. Yeah, it's basically just pure gluten. 
Right. Uh, so, if, so it's so like if for all the people who are eating gluten free diets, this is your natural enemy. Yeah. Uh, because basically, you take out everything that isn't the gluten, so you get this long sort of stringy meat uh, meat like strands. Uh, it's frequently used as like fake chicken uh, in right. Chinese restaurants. Yeah. Fake chicken. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, when my stepmother was a vegetarian, I would walk into the pantry and there would be bags of this stuff. Um, yeah. So we yeah, I, say I, it, 10. Yeah, I don't, don't normally have it as part of my diet, but it worked pretty well. I mean, it's fairly yeah. neutral in flavor. So if you put a strongly flavored sauce right. in it, it is you always season it up. that is possible to eat. It's kind of chewy. Uh, yeah. So let's see. What else? Uh, the gaming front, I played some more uh, Dragon Quest Builders, uh, finally getting back to that. Oh, yeah. Uh, finally got around to finishing up Chapter 3 and got into Chapter 4. And, man, there is a nasty difficulty spike in Chapter 4. Is this Dragon Quest Builders 2 or 1 you're playing? This is this is 1. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I was thinking that maybe I would finish, finish up 1 before starting on 2. Uh, but it is just stupid hard with the bosses. So I was uh, kind of thinking that maybe at the moment I will not try to power through Chapter 4 just because it looks like it's going to be a lot of kind of frustrating boss battle stuff. Ah, okay. And jump right into 2. I need to get back to it. Um, I was Minecrafting a little bit, you know, today. Uh, yeah. And only for, I mean, Matt walked in. I, I was Minecrafting for all of like f maybe 10 minutes before Matt showed up. So I got a half you hour. You say that today. very defensively, Alan, as though you had been Minecrafting for much, much longer than that. No, I really hadn't. Need to so, preserve your reputation as a non-addict Minecraft player. Yeah, so like only a half hour, maybe at best. But you know, he, little... can, he can quit any time he wants to. I know, I have <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> so <laughs> quitting is easy. I've done it a hundred times. Hmm. Alrighty, so I guess that's it from me for the moment. Oh, yeah, Elise was a big fan of Dragon Quest Builders too. She's been playing a lot uh, until Fire Emblem brought her away from it. But <laughs> yeah, so I hear good things. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so we uh, we got a real quick feedback. So let's let's do that real quick. This is more for Matt than it is for the rest of you. But here we go. No, no, it's interesting. Um, we got some feedback from James, who says, "Hi, Matt." The games that I brought, uh, this is for the uh, Labor Day get-together and uh, gaming weekend, were Deep Sea Adventures, which is a push-your-luck-to-collect-treasure in the Deep Ocean game, and hope you don't run out of oxygen. The second game was, wow, Teo Tihuacan, a worker placement game where you build a central Aztec pyramid while killing off your workers for rewards. <laughs> I, I assume you weren't literally had like actual pyramid on the board. Yes, you do. You you build it piece by piece. Oh, you really? have workers mine pi mine pyramid pieces on one section of the board. Hmm. You build the pyramid pieces, and then the way this game works is every time your player lands on a space and does something, you increase their level. You you start off with like a, a d six. Mm -hmm. with the the one pip facing upwards, and then every time they go to a new space on the board, you increase the number of pips until you get to six, at which point they get sacrificed on the so pyramid. is the pyramid horizontal or vertical? It is an actual three-dimensional pyramid okay. with, like, four sides how and many, steps going up to the top. How many people get to play this game? Um, I'm not sure. It, we played with, like, four people. Okay. Three players, and then James was uh, was sort of, like, teaching us how to play right, as we yeah. went along. But it's just such a fun dynamic of like, train, 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 sacrifice! <laughs> and every time you commit a sacrifice, you get a prize. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Well, the the point of me asking all this question is was just trying to imagine physically what this game looks like. Uh, well, um, let's see. It's a large board with right. the pyramid in the center, and then all around the edges are various um, activity spaces Got you. where you can... Um, produce arts and crafts. Pro huh? <laughs> you said activity spaces like arts and crafts. Yes. Um, you produce various commodities, and then there are spaces where you use like stones and such like to build the pyramid, mm -hmm. or you can drop on another space, which is decorate the pyramid. And then there's other ones for like 
uh, build housing for the the priests and things. Mm, got you. So it, it just seems like there must be a lot of physical pieces to this game to play. Uh, there's a lot of pyramid blocks, but I mean, aside from that, not too many pieces. Mm, okay. So. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it was fun time. Thanks very much, James, for providing the the information about those because I I just couldn't remember the names of these games after we had played them. Mm. Um, but the Deep Sea Adventure game is another cute one where basically you have a like little bunch of layers of the ocean where you send divers down to collect treasure and then get back to the surface before the oxygen runs out. And part of the dynamic of the game is that you are all using a common pool of oxygen. So the deeper you go, the longer you're down, the more oxygen you use. So it's very much in your benefit to go down, grab something, and then get back to the top before the oxygen runs out. However, all the stuff that's worth the most points is way down at the bottom of the ocean. So you got to go deep to get something that's like juicy enough that you'll still win the game when you get to the top. So it's a race between greed and survival. So fun game. Well, risk or reward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we don't really have anything more. We can either run a break or we just go right into our topic. Uh, let's go right into the topic. Let's just go right into that fantastic topic, which for this week is the motion manga version of Investor Z. Yeah, so, what do we need to know? In Investor Z is a manga about investing money in Japan. Yeah, it's right. by uh, Mita Norifusa. Uh, who I previously knew uh, as the author of Dragon Zakura, uh, mm. which I only knew because it had Hiroshi Abe starring in it uh, <laughs> in the uh, in the, uh, uh, the live action adaptation. Uh, and I'm a big Hiroshi Abe fan, so he's one of the few uh, J drama actors I actually really really enjoy watching. Oh, really? Um, yeah, but uh, Dragon Zakura was not stupendous, uh, but it was it was okay. Um, it's sort of the, the general plot of Dragon Sakura, which is not what we're talking about, is uh, a, uh, a maverick teacher go, takes a, a, a class of hard, hard luck students and he's going to get them all into Todai, to, which is Tokyo University, the best university in Japan, and, and his adventures thereby. Um, so it was okay. Um, and uh, a couple years back, the Investor Z manga came out on Crunchyroll's uh, manga service. So I've actually read a fair amount of Investor Z. And as previously stated, that's exactly it. It's about investing. Hi, uh, hi hot blooded shonen invest. Finally. <laughs> um, let's start off by discussing the artist's art style. It seems very retro and old fashioned and. Not what I would consider the big selling point of... Okay, uh, let's just say it now. Faces are hard to draw. Really hard to draw. Like, oh yeah. my gosh, and especially those eyes. Eyes are hard. Yeah, some of those character yeah. designs were really... <laughs> the mother of the main character, especially, I remember like, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> they showed her from this angle, <laughs> this shape of her head. I was like, I don't know about this at all. But so, so as Matt mentioned, this is not an anime. This is a motion manga, uh, which is a somewhat distressing concept where they put up lightly animated frames taken directly from the manga in order without any editing, and then uh, some sullen Americans read them to you. Yeah, and all I can say is the pacing of the motion manga was dreadfully slow and deliberate, and... The people reading the lines did not read them as though they were doing a radio play, and certainly not a Japanese shonen radio play. They they just totally lacked the the like over the top emotionality and verve that that like even the the most wretched voice actor in in Japanese animation will produce. Now, to be fair, the material they were given to work with here is difficult to speak about animatedly. 
uh, because ah, it is ah, I saw what a, you did there. a sort of weirdly conceived history of money for like <laughs> half of this eight episode run. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, I, I would not be using any of this material in your entrance essay to econ grad school. I just want to say that now. Uh, yeah. Well, money is people, and people are money, mm-hmm. right? Yes, the aphorisms <laughs> are coming. You know, at a rate of like one aphorism per per episode. Yeah. they are really dubious aphorisms. Uh let's see. Okay, so we should discuss the characters in Investor Z. Um, the Z is for Zizen, our viewpoint character, who is just terribly, terribly characterized. He's supposed to be number one in his entrance class at this hoity-toity university, and he is saddled with being the idiot um exposition character where he goes gosh what's that and then every time somebody says something he repeats it so the audience knows it's important and then on the other hand being a financial investing wunderkind who shocks everyone around him with his bold and daring investment strategies which seem impossible and yet succeed against all odds But wait, you say, how could it be that a first year junior high student is investing ludicrously large sums of money? And therein lies the high concept behind this this manga. Yeah. Uh, And there is a a one of the best private schools in Japan has a history going back to well before the war. And they it's tuition free if you can make it in. But it turns out it's it, it's funded strictly by a club of investing students run by the uh, each year one student is admitted, and that student is the one who got the best scores on the entrance exam. Yes, and it's a secret club, so nobody knows about it. Even the people in the club don't know who their predecessors were. They only know the guys who were there when they started. Dun dun dun! <laughs> so you have his five seniors in the investing club as characters, and they there's not much to distinguish between them. As um, one of them waves a stick around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so very I, I mahjong. That, I yeah, I, the one yeah, when so, I first saw them playing mahjong, I'm like, did Paul trick us into watching another mahjong <laughs> thing? <laughs> but then, no, it, it went other directions, but. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple more mahjong ones in the in the in my back pocket. I'll pull them out when you don't expect them. But no, this was not the uh, the, the the high concept here. They better be better than this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a high bar to clear, I'm afraid. Um, and I think um, when you get right down to it, the very worst thing about this is, as was mentioned before, the pacing. Um, you know, th- this is a manga where in you know entire chapters running the entire volume will be spent you know on exposition and there has been no effort to sort of make this more digestible for linear listening i mean you can scan through that pretty quickly when you're reading it so i did not have quite as painful an experience as as um as this when i was reading the manga yeah um this this sort of brings to mind a lot of stuff that i read in um, Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics, um, which is, I, I would say, a very interesting uh, viewpoint on the process of sequential art in general. But basically, the great thing about um, books and comic books, manga, graphic novels, is that you run them at your own pace. If you want to sit there and breeze through it as quickly as you can read the word balloons, that's fantastic. If you want to sit there and linger on the art and appreciate coloring or reread something three times, you can do that. Whereas when you're dealing with um, um, a mass communications medium like radio or television or movies, the time is totally in the hands of the people presenting it to you, and you're basically the passive receptor of of their 
audiovisual rhetoric. It's almost why I always choose the shonen manga version over the anime for anything I read, usually. Coming mm -hmm. from Jump, especially, where the pacing can be pretty slow <laughs> with the anime version. Yeah. Um, so this was actually, I think, reasonably well-received. It's had a couple of adaptations. Uh, there was a live-action adaptation. I think there's been a Korean live-action adaptation. And from what I read just now in the Wikipedia article, one's planned for China as well. Yeah. Um, I think it, it gets by mostly on the idea of presenting relatively esoteric concepts like investing in economics in an easy to digest format in the original manga where the story is not the central point of this um it, it mac in to my mind it almost reads kind of like a parody of of a shonen sports uh, manga except the joke is that we're doing it about economics and investing i guess i kind of wish that they didn't focus so much on the history of money but more on like how stock markets actually work and mm. that type of thing. Cause I don't really know much about that at all. <laughs> I'll be honest, but uh, black maybe magic, really, maybe, maybe the manga does cover that later on, but yeah, the the... Actual, like modern day investing. Like I wish they put, spent a little more time on like what that actually is and what matters about that. And they didn't really get there. Yeah. Um, so this is, they just basically started at the beginning of the manga and started, uh, the adaptation process and that's so like if you look at the process of making an anime out of a manga you know there's a, a lot of work you know you come up with your series composition where you figure out okay we're going to cover this much of it so you know we have to spread out uh, the action so you know we have highs and lows in each of the episodes mm -hmm. uh, you know we're going to have to you know switch things around figure out how to turn this into something people actually want to watch and in this case the adaptation process was very different. It is, what direction is the panel going to slide in from? Uh, you know, which bits are we going to move around? And are we going to remember to animate the, the lip flaps or not? <laughs> it's not, it does not. So there's actually some good stuff over, you know, the uh, 100 chapters of the manga or so, and you have sort of a good story going on there. Uh, but when you're just, you know, wallowing at this, you know, snail's pace exposition of, of monetary history, you know, it's it's not it, it. There's a lot of obstacles between you and enjoyment. Right. Uh, the presentation was not not wonderful. Right. We keep talking yeah. about pacing. Pacing was really bad. Um, these concepts were just not presented in any kind of real intriguing, interesting manner based on that pacing and based on the presentation of it in the uh, anim animated or motioned yeah. version of this, you know, this manga. I've seen better motion graphics before, um, and this was terrible. Yeah, and the... Uh the direction the actors were given was was neither naturalistic nor interestingly theatrical right. and was just terribly leaden um plus there we're was one of the boys of plus one we of the also stressed that we're complaining as much about this being that slow it was only an hour long <laughs> we're still like really? oh god what it is felt it much longer yeah those the you know one seven minute thing or even eight minute or nine minute it felt terribly long, mm -hmm. right. and uh, we didn't sit down and watch this for four hours. Like, <laughs> no, that's that's minutes. true, but yeah. it felt like it. And and I suppose to to give you some some background on this, there are seventeen <laughs> volumes of of the original Investor Z manga, and the the motion manga treatment only covers like part of volume one, I think. Really? Yeah, I think that's right. Paul, have you seen the live action? Is it better? I have not seen the live action. Okay. I may give it a shot, just out of curiosity, morbid curiosity at this point. <laughs> I, I, it has to be better. It has to be far more exciting, excitable. Well, and, and I mean, the other thing of about it feeling long is it's that feeling of waste, not just of your own time, which is obvious, but it's just like, you know, they had an opportunity to put some stuff up on the screen and this is what they're picking. You know, it would not have taken much to say, OK, well, let's you know move it along here. Yeah. Uh, it also, our experience was not assisted because there was no Japanese language track on Crunchyroll. Right. It yeah. was uh, these uh, rather 
I guess, old school, not in a good way, American uh, voice actors doing funny voices. Yeah, was, it was, was this, not good. Is this Crunchyroll doing this? Like, I don't, I've never seen something like this on Crunchyroll before, like this motion manga thing. So I don't know if the day they, they voice it. I, <laughs> I have no music. idea. Like, was there a Japanese voice version of this? Is what I'm asking. I don't um, think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. And it looks like there are actually some other motion manga on uh, Crunchyroll. Okay. Um, there is something called Shoku King. There is something called The Diary of Ochibi. I have a vague memory of that, and I have a vague memory. It was really horrible, and I flocked out the rest of it. <laughs> and then The Tenth Prism, um, oh. which from the little picture looks pretty shonen -y, and I do not think would benefit at all from this treatment. The dialogue and... was not good enough to, to <laughs> I guess, to, to carry this, and also the delivery of the dialogue was also very bad. So overall... Right. Yeah, everything was just not yeah. good about this. Uh, you know, look... I already know all these concepts, so for me, it was even more extra boring. There was nothing to, I don't know, there's just nothing interesting about any of it. And I, a lot of the content, the whole content for all the stuff could probably have been explained in a pretty good, concentrated, maybe five or seven minutes at most. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I suppose I have to quibble a little bit about the, the author's conception of the money, e economics, and investing. At one point, this guy is, you know, secretly brought into the investors club through a secret doorway, and he's told that investing is all about guts and passion, which is a typical sports manga trope. Then as soon as they're are like, okay, here's some real money. Go out and use your guts and guts and intuition to to invest in stuff. And he, you know, does something, and they're like, oh my god, don't do that. And it then they're like, yeah, I agree with you. And <laughs> and, and then they're like, but there are rules about investing. And then they go and explain the history of money and how it, you know, marketplaces were all about barter, and money sort of allowed you to have a much more fluid exchange of goods and services. And then they came to like how you would have you know paper money rep, you know replacing devalued um, metal coins and so on and so forth and and how it becomes more and more abstract and with every level of abstraction you get more and more vigorous economic action but it's all presented in a very um, simplistic and utopian method. It does nothing to address counterfeiting and then. Um, con games, which is basically where, where I personally feel that stock markets come into play because they outright admit that stock markets are gambling. You're just gambling with like little chips of company value as opposed to chips representing actual money of the land. So I think we have thoroughly savaged the corpse of this show, but not without cause. Uh, <laughs> is, is there uh, anything else to say about it? links do we have links we do have I mean, links i would say read it don't watch this if you're <laughs> this seen, like no right i I, I, I heard it sounds like that's sort of i would i would absolutely the same thing i would plead with you not to watch this i think this might be useful in the interrogation of political prisoners um but aside from that no good well, god I, mean, no. I actually was able to watch it i mean i was not screaming compared to things like good good fairies uh oh, yes. so it was i was able to survive this even with the the dubbed voices but yes i would not at all recommend that anybody watch this <laughs> i mean if you have crunchy roll and you're tempted to watch this you can also just like click on the manga tab instead <laughs> sure. you know just walk away they go more into like what a stock market actually is and those concepts in later volumes or is it uh, there has i i can't remember how far i made it i've been away from it for a while i was meaning to go back and catch up i caught up at one point and then stopped um they they i don't think they've done stock markets specifically as of the okay. point i've read uh, but they get more into a lot of drama and you know s stuff going on outside the investing club as okay. uh zizen gets involved in, in in the shadowy economic world of the companies who are sponsoring 
uh, the, the school. Interesting. Yeah. That, yeah. sounds, right. uh, that yeah. sounds more interesting than anything we've presented here. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, put this on the screen, lead with this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, or at least, you know, get to it within, you know, the entire run of episodes that you are limited to, to animating. Yeah. Um, animating I, I was looking up images from this and I saw a, a panel somebody had scanned where they had a gigantic behemoth of Warren Buffett drawn manga style striding majestically through the financial districts. And people were going like Buffett Sama, Buffett Sama, greatest investor ever. <laughs> and there, there are moments like that. So sort of the this weird shonen and manga lens on world economics does have you know the sort of am- bemusement value to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So oglink.com slash og seven four five. Obviously, show number. Um, we'll give you all the links. Uh, if you choose to watch this at your own risk, um, <laughs> on Crunchyroll, oglink.com slash 4IV, um, I would not recommend setting a drip for this show. You will overdose out of boredom. So, I thought Game Crazy was an okay name for a social media gaming company. But that's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the whole premise was just bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is very uh, to quote Jefferson, meh. So, uh, yeah, that seems generous. Yeah, uh, meh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For motion comic, at least. <laughs> yeah, for motion comic. I, I'd say that good. would be a meh in like bold face, italic, underlined, and then with three exclamation points after it. Yeah, well, you got to put, you got to inject, you know, Jefferson's enthusiasm for everything. With that being said, it wouldn't be very good. So, yeah, you're right. Meh is probably too nice. Um, it's worse than that. So, anyhow, so I wouldn't recommend anyone watch it. Uh, I don't recommend you even care to watch it. Um, and I'm certainly not recommending Read it. the original manga if you're actually interested right. in, in investment. I'm and sure economics. it applies a lot better. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't have anything else for us to talk about. Anything else, guys? No? I guess we're good. All right, then we're going <laughs> to close up. So for all the things we talked about here www.talkgeneration.net or just ognetworks.tv um so what are we gonna do next week good question you'll find out on wednesday because that's when we podcast for feedback you can uh hang out with us over in discord oglink.com slash feedback it'll take you over inside there you can leave some feedback you can say hello uh, you could also email us if you choose to do that taku.generation at gmail.com um, phone numbers are should be gone by now yeah should be dead should be completely gone I finally did it <laughs> it only took a decade plus um, so anyhow uh, so okay so Matt we got a we got a fortune yes we do yeah what do we got this week's fortune cookie to guide you through the upcoming week is Four Basic Principles of Writing Clarity, Brevity, Simplicity, and Humanity. It's too serious. <laughs> All right, well, there's your advice, uh, everyone. In bed with a rabid armadillo. Oh, okay. That doesn't work either, Clark. but that's fine. So thank you, everyone, for listening. You want uh, salacious teasers to these things. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye.